Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com to another blog and to another podcast. Today we transition into the sixth chapter of Mark's Gospel. We're in Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, which reads, Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. And his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. That's Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Today we transition into Mark chapter 6. After healing the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years and raising the synagogue ruler's 12-year-old daughter from the dead, the Lord Jesus has traveled back to his hometown, Nazareth, from the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee, which was about 22 miles away. In verse 1 of today's passage, we read, Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? The people of Jesus' hometown naturally had difficulty with this hometown boy making the claims he had made. In fact, on that first Sabbath, the Lord Jesus had returned home They let him know what they thought. Literally, they were perplexed by the Lord Jesus, for they had always known him as a lowly carpenter. They had no idea that he could be the Savior of the world. Interestingly, the church-going folks should have recognized the Lord Jesus for who he was, since there are so many passages in the Old Testament that tells us about him. Yet the people there in Nazareth were not in the habit of looking for God through the scriptures. Thus, when the Lord Jesus began his ministry, they mislabeled him as a lowly educated person. In verse 3 of today's passage, we read, Then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. And his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. The Greek word translated carpenter literally means a craftsman. This was typically someone who was a blue-collar worker. In ancient times, a carpenter was somebody who could build anything from a chicken coop to a home. Since most of the buildings were made of stone, it is believed the Lord Jesus was primarily a stonemason. The hometown folk did not see the Lord Jesus as a rabbi, for he did not jump through the hoops of their theological system. The people saw him as a man who worked with his hands. After all, he got his hands dirty. They thought he could not be the Messiah because he did not fit their definition of Messiah. He was one who knew how to make stuff. He was a common person. And they had been deeply offended just a few weeks earlier when he claimed to be the Messiah after his reading in the synagogue. The Lord Jesus refused to allow the flawed perception of sinful man to define it. He set a real good precedent here for you and me. Sadly, most people are defined too much by what others think rather than what God thinks. 
The Lord Jesus illustrated for us well what it looks like to be defined by the Father in heaven. We are best defined by him when we obey his word. In verse 4 of today's passage, we read, Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. Whereas the people in the hometown of the Lord Jesus were astonished by his teaching, they remained in their unbelief regarding his identity. And although faith in the God of the Bible is tremendously powerful, unbelief is equally as powerful. The power of unbelief was and is so great that it cast all humankind into a separated state with reference to God. And its impact will also extend throughout all eternity for those who resist the luring of God to believe in him. In verses 5 and 6 of today's passage, we read, And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. In this moment, the Lord Jesus accentuated the people's inability to believe. It was unbelief in the God of the Bible that brought the curse upon all of humanity. And it is unbelief in the Son of God that catapults people into eternal hell. When we are defined by our unbelief in the God of the Bible, we will be defined by something else. Most are most often defined by their fallen understanding of life. The Lord Jesus worked few miracles in Nazareth because the people did not believe in him. There is a very serious relationship between his work in this world and our faith in him. Indicated here is the idea that the Lord Jesus desired and would have done much more but the people's lack of belief in him prevented it. In fact, he was totally blown away by their unbelief. In the same way that faith is contagious, unbelief is contagious. Adam and Eve failed to enter into God's promise because of their unbelief. The world at large failed at the preaching of Noah. Only eight people got into the boat. The results of the flood was an incredible example of the power of unbelief. Pharaoh hardened his heart against God in unbelief, and the firstborn of his household died. When our view of the Lord fails to bring us to our knees before him, we painstakingly fall short of his power. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.